The VLAN tag field defined in the IEEE 802.1Q has 12 bits for host identification, supporting a maximum of only 4,094 VLANs. However, it's common these days to have a multi-tiered application deployment where every tier requires its own segment and with literally thousands of multi-tier application segments, this will for sure run out soon. Then came along VXLAN. VXLAN uses a 24-bit network segment ID called a VNI used for host identification. This is much larger than the 12 bits used for traditional VLAN identification. The VNI is just a fancy name for a VLAN ID, but it now supports up to 16 million VXLAN segments. This is considerably more than the traditional 4094 supported endpoints with VLANs. Not only does it provide more hosts, but it enables better network isolation capabilities having many little VXLAN segments instead of one large VLAN domain. VXLAN has become the de facto overlay protocol these days and brings many advantages to network architecture in terms of flexibility, isolation and scalability. It implements an Ethernet segment virtualizing a thick Ethernet cable. It works on the mechanisms of encapsulation and decapsulation and creates tunnels between two tunnel endpoints known as VTAPs, which can either be a physical or software switch. The VXLAN tunnel endpoint service maps .1Q layer 2 frames, aka VLAN ID, into a VXLAN segment tunnel, aka a VNI. The VTAP will have two interfaces. One interface will connect to the standard Ethernet to the end hosts in the local segment, and the other connects to the regular IP underlay. The VTAP performs two primary functions. Firstly, it receives traffic from the locally connected endpoints via the standard Ethernet interface and encapsulates it into VXLAN packets defined for the remote VTAP endpoint. Secondly, it receives VXLAN traffic originating from the remote VTAP node, decapsulates it and forwards it to the local connected endpoint. The VTAP has many ways it can learn the destination VTAP and endpoint information. Some of these may use standard control plane protocols, while others use data plane flooding and learning mechanisms, which will be discussed later. The underlay control plane exchanges reachability information for the VTAP IP addresses and can be any IGPs such as OSPF or ISIS, or even BGP can be used. 